Meet Jill Tarter. She's an expert in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. She's also a radio astronomer. She's also the subject of this book, Making Contact by Sarah Scholes, and it's about Jill Tarter. She wrote this review. In her 1975 PhD thesis, she coined the term brown dwarfs, and this is Carl Sagan's book, Contact, which was made into a movie. The character uh, Ellie Arroway was based on Jill Tarter's real life. I sat down with Jill in Hawaii and we talked about the question, are we alone? I'm Jill Tarter. I currently hold the Bernard M. Oliver Chair for SETI at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California. Oh, and uh, how did you get into this? How did, when you were a little girl and looked up in the sky and said, I wonder if there is, is there anybody out there like Jodie Foster's character did? Well, not quite. I'd walk, um, when I was a small child, I'd go with my parents to visit my aunt and uncle in the Keys of West Florida, uh, the west coast of Florida. Very, very dark. Nobody lived there except my beachcomber aunt and uncle. And my dad and I would walk along the beach at night and I'd look up and, and I remember having this feeling that probably on some of those stars up there, there'd be another creature walking along an ocean coast with their parent looking at our sun as one of the stars in their sky and you know, wondering about us. So no big aha moment, it just uh, out on the dark beaches in uh, an uninhabited key in Florida, it seemed like there could in fact be other places in the universe that would uh, host intelligent life. Now you've been looking for aliens or signals from extraterrestrial intelligence for quite a long time. Have there any been some been some false alarms where you were just excited, oh, we've got one this time. What was the most excited you've ever been? Yeah, we've had a few of what have turned out to be false positives, but in the moment were um, you know, adrenaline rushing kind of events. Do stupid things. Uh, and with each one, we learn how to do the job better uh, as far as what we need to do to check that what we have found is what we think it might be, as opposed to some form of our own technology, which is fooling us. A couple of weeks ago, Yuri Milner decided to support uh, SETI efforts for $100 million over the next right. 10 years. And do you think that infusion of money will A, help SETI searches, and B, help them avoid things like you just described? Oh, how can it not help? It's fantastic. <laughs> It's a big chunk of change and at least a 10-year period of uh, commitment to continue doing the search. So that will help. And as people deal with more and more data, because our technology and Moore's law allows us to swallow more of the data that we'd like to, uh, to analyze more quickly, they're going to have to deal with all kinds of different potentials for interference. And so, yeah, they'll get cleverer. I mean, when you have mother necessity, right, mother of invention, when there's something driving you that's, that's interrupting and interfering with the work you want to do, you figure out how to take care of it. So we'll learn and we'll develop, no doubt, uh, the SETI community will develop a lot of uh, better, more sophisticated tools we shouldn't expect to meet ourselves, right? That doesn't mean that we shouldn't expect to meet intelligent tool manufacturing and using um, aliens. I mean, I still don't understand. I don't think anyone understands what was behind the very large increase in human brain size right? at the end of the last glacial period. What drove that? Was it just the, uh, the jack of all trades, the every man was the, needed to survive in the changing, uh, rapidly changing climate? Is that what did it? I don't know. That's, that's an intriguing thing. We don't see such radical, large scale changes over short periods of time very often. And can you not have human-like intelligence, unless that's happened to your species. We find that there's no one out there 
I think the message is that we ought to be taking even better care of the life that we do have on, on this planet, that we do know about. Um, but, you know, that's a really very significant conclusion, that there's no life out there. Um, you don't make that on the basis of 10 years of searching or 50 years of searching. You don't make that lightly. So you don't make or draw that conclusion until the amount of effort that you've put into the search is commensurate with the importance of that conclusion.